The Highway to Change, a non-stop, drag-out, 15-hour road trip from the California deserts to the Colorado Rockies to the Democratic National Convention. We thought we'd take a chance to see the man himself, the one who would revolutionize the political process and restore our country's dignity. This is why we were here. Three journalists, two cameras, one press pass. Hey, this is Martin Markovitz, live from the DNC. It's and not live. I'm, I'm rolling right now. Okay. Only stop. If there's a haunt, diamond. No. All right, let's just do it anyway. Okay. Denver was buzzing. There was a sense of something greater stirring here. A momentum had begun. It's just history yeah. being made, and, and what a day. All types are here. It's one thing about the Democratic Party. It attracts all types from all over the nation, all over the world. Dude, obviously, everybody has the right to protest. We love the First Amendment. You know, I need the right to rip people's throats out if I feel like ripping someone's throat out. Um, some people give me more trouble about that than they do back home in Transylvania. I think that's great that we've got all of these conversations happening right here in the same city. That's what democracy is, and that's exciting to me. <laughs> but I, I feel like we need to get, get along. We're all in this together. We're all in one America. It's not Democrat or Republican. It's, uh, it's about our humanity now. I was so proud because I saw all races coming together in all ages. We can't vote, but we're speaking out. How old are you guys? 18. 18. So first time voting. Yes. yes. They say that the youth is more informed, opinionated, and inspired this time around than any other election in our history. I'm a college Republican from Salt Lake City. If we pull everyone out of the Middle East right now, it's just like taking a cake out of the oven like when it's half-baked. There is something to be said about overcooking something. All right, that's fair. Go America. <laughs> well, that we can agree on. Says that I'm an all country blue. We are in beautiful downtown Denver. And we're going to talk to the organizers right now. Youthful young kids who want to make a difference in the world. I'm the national coordinator for Trick or Vote. And Trick or Vote is a national costume canvas that's taking place in 25 cities across the country this year. It's a Halloween costume canvas. We're going to be knocking on over a thousand, uh, hun sorry, a hundred thousand doors on Halloween all across the country. Um, five days before the general election, the one day that folks are actually expecting a knock on the door. And we're trying to talk to young people in a creative, fun, innovative way about kind of the local stuff that really matters to you. So maybe these activist groups can make a difference, although some just might make it worse. No matter what you do, I'm still the same. I would like 9-11 investigated, but people like this turn the average person off. I'm not even the average person. I put up with a lot. He's turned me off because my freedom of speech just got stomped all over. Dumb is no longer acceptable, folks. I'm sorry. This is an emotional charade. It's going to be business as usual. People are going to feel good, sing kumbaya. When the smoke clears, we're, it, it's not going to change. Banks get bailed out, people don't get bailed out. I live as an African American in this country, and I can tell you that his election is not going to set me free. People should have a voice, and we can't cage them in. And health care for everyone is really, you know, they, they talk about it, but the reality is that, you know, we're, we'd rather spend $50 million on, you know, on police force. As you see right now, we got a lot of cops in full riot gear in back of us. Fifty million dollars to upgrade their equipment. What kind of message is that sending if this is acceptable to set up this kind of police state? 
Tell me your name. My name is Ben Schrader. And where did you serve? I served in Bakuba, Iraq for a year. And how about the protest yesterday? Do you think it was successful? I think it was uh, very successful. We uh, had the largest march here in Denver during the DNC. Mobilized for peace, Iraq veterans against the war. And if you could just tell me why you're against the war. Um, I'm against the war because, well, while I was there, I saw a lot of devastation, a lot of death, and uh, a lot of families torn apart. Were you guys political at the time? Um, I was a little political, but it's it's kind of funny. I was actually on the other side. I was a young Republican at the time, and uh, then my military experience really pushed me uh, left. Finally, the moment came that we've all been waiting for, a big speech. We meet at one of those defining moments, a moment when our nation is at war, our economy is in turmoil, and the American promise has been threatened once more. And where were we? Watching it on TV. Yes, that's right. A thousand mile drive to Denver, and we watched it on TV. Tonight, more Americans are out of work, and more are working harder for less. More of you have lost your homes, and even more are watching your home values plummet. More of you have cars you can't afford to drive, credit cards, bills you can't afford to pay, and tuition that's beyond your reach. And these challenges are not all our government's making, but the failure to respond is a direct result of a broken politics in Washington and the failed policies of George W. Bush. But in the end, we realized we were exactly where we were supposed to be, with the people. We are better than these last eight years. We are a better country than this. Tonight, tonight I say to the people of America, to Democrats and Republicans,